100 years for a department to have survived through all the different changes in the educational system, in funding systems and everything like that. For it still to be here is, I think, uh, a feat in itself. Goodness, it's a long time since I've worked in here. I was looking at ways of um, expanding language teaching. So we'd put on a play in Russian and I did, did this for about 15 years, different, different plays. This piano is still here. <laughs> it actually is in one of the VHS videos that we did of a performance. That was 1988, I think. Training through a play is an absolutely brilliant way of getting students to forget their Britishness. 1915, 1916, that's the very first year in which Russian was taught. Tuesday and Friday, 7.30, Tuesday and Friday, 8.30. The fee for the session of three terms would be one pound, one shilling. When I was writing um, the history of the department, I corresponded with large numbers of former students and some former staff. And um, there was a constant refrain about what, what a marvellous community the department had been. Um, this is one actually in 1968 at my own house. My wife and I invited graduands, that's the whole of the final year and staff, Monica Partridge, who was head of department then, and me in the middle on the grounds I think that it, it was my house <laughs> where we were meeting. Of course things have changed now, but it's still a small unit and I'd be surprised if they didn't feel much the same. Loved every second of it. Um, it was really nice to graduate in such a small department with all my friends. Um, we're very close as a department, so that was quite nice. There are a couple of archives in manuscripts and special collections that have proved very interesting and were excellent material for exhibitions. One of the largest outside of Russia is a whole collection of Soviet World War II posters. The posters themselves are beginning to um, deteriorate, as you might expect. So it was decided we, that they would be digitised um, for the exhibition. And we've now produced a website to bring it to public view and now to make it internationally accessible. Monica Partridge obviously springs to mind. Um, she was a force to be reckoned with, larger than life figure in her time. The Partridge bequest is a uh, legacy left to the department by a former professor, Monica Partridge. And it works in the way that to do something outside of the compulsory component of a year abroad. And I'd looked at this volunteering program in um, Kyrgyzstan with an NGO. And so I sort of applied um, for the Partridge scholarship and I was awarded £500 and that was a massive help. Um, and I was there just teaching um, sort of in disadvantaged communities um, of the capital in Bishkek. And that was a really, really great experience. I don't think I'd have been able to do it without it, really. That sort of international experience and these volunteering placements and things like that, they're, I think they're very attractive, very sort of sought after. I suppose that I was surprised by how few students, or rather degree students, there were until the university became an independent university in 1948. I hadn't quite expected there to be so few. It's about remembering, isn't it? <laughs> but not getting swallowed by the memories and thinking how good those times were for so many people, I think, which is really pleasurable to remember. Thank you all very much again, but um, actually somebody else wants to say something. Dr. Mark, yes. um, I thought you noticed that we've had three of our final year in the play this year.